Let's talk about file permissions. I'm on Amazon Web Services using Ubuntu. Any Linux command line is going to work for this. So uh, you'll see here that I'm logged in as a user named Joe. So let's go ahead and uh, pico a file called uh, myfile.txt. I'm just going to add one, two, three. I'm going to use Control O to save and Control X to exit. And we can use our ls hyphen um, alh command just to list everything. Uh, and let's go ahead and just do it with myfile.txt. I don't want to see everything in this directory. Let's just look at myfile.txt. And the h isn't necessary here because if we're pointing it at a file, we know it's not hidden. Um, just force of habit there when I use the ls command to sort of list everything in long human readable format. And we can see the breakdown of this. So we start with, over on the left, the file permissions. We're going to talk about what each of these slots are. These are groups of three. This would be an RWX. This would be an RWX. In the absence of a permission, we see a dash, so there's no X. And in this case, we see RWX. There's an absence for W and an absence for X, so only read here. We're going to talk about what that group means. And then over on the left, we have um, this very first one will indicate whether or not this is like a directory or a file or a sim link or something else uh, like that. In this case, because it's just a hyphen, it's a file. So we know we have a file and we have our groups of RWX that then occur after that. So pretty easy. Uh, we have a user named Joe who owns the file. The first one is the user. The second Joe here is the group that owns the file. So I'm in a, I have a user named group, uh, Joe and a group named Joe. And if I were to add Joe to a different group, we can modify the group ownership. We'll look at that as well. We have our file size, five. We can see the date that this was created and the time according to Amazon Web Services. And then we have the file name. And so here's a breakdown of this file as we see it. We have the file owner that has read-write permissions. We have um, the, the group owner that has read-write permissions. And we have the rest of humanity, uh, which has read and then no write and no execute permissions. And so this is kind of how it uh, pans out. The first person we see here, the owner, that relates to the first three read, write, execute. The second identifier we see here is the group that's associated with this file. And the group, Joe, has read, write permissions. And then everyone else uh, who isn't a part of this user, who is not this user and who's not a part of this group, will have these permissions. So everybody who's not Joe can read the file, but everybody who's either the user Joe or in the group Joe will be able to read or write to this file. File permissions are based on numbers. So this is uh, essentially a binary representation of three bits. And if we look at a binary chart, and this is something that we've looked at previously, uh, we know that every bit has a value of 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. And essentially, we're just looking at three bits here. So the uh, third bit, these are just groups of three bits that are placed together. So the bit all the way to the left will have a value of 4. The bit um, the second in the middle here, we'll have a value of two, and the bit all the way on the right will have a value of one. And we add those together. So in this case, the file owner has permissions of six because we have four plus two. The group owner, Joe here, will have a file permission of the number six. We're gonna look at how this is implemented in a second. And everybody else on the face of the planet right now will have a file permission of just the R. 
So this would be four. So this would translate out to a file permission of six, six, four. All right, I'm going to leave it at uh, this for this video. In the next video, we'll go ahead and we'll start making changes to file permissions using the chmod command.